Oh, Reverend Denise here. So happy to be with you. We're having a little bit of our first summer rain. So if you hear a little background noise or a little thunder, uh, it will be that. But it's lovely. We love it. We do love it. All right. So uh, welcome to welcome to Wisdom Wednesdays. Uh, my name is Reverend Denise Schubert. For those of you who I don't know or are joining me for the first time, we come together really just for a little midweek wake-up call, a little midweek checking in just to make sure that we remember that we are a, uh, a powerful spirit, that we are not an ego, and uh, we come together for a little music, a little message, a little connection. So take a minute and say hello to me so I know that I'm not here. I can see there's a already so come say hello so i don't think i'm just sitting here talking to myself like a crazy person <laughs> yeah there you are ah so we start a new month uh today uh we actually have a wonderful summer series uh at unity uh uh, we're calling it Tending Your Spiritual Garden, Tending Our Spiritual Garden, which uh, in some ways is about tending to Unity Naples itself. You know, we're coming out of the pandemic, we're coming out of, of Reverend Mark Anthony Lord leaving and returning to his home, family home. So we're uh, in the process of coming back to life, breathing life. We're doing our planting, we're planting a new garden for our growth and our success and we're also planting your spiritual garden, right? That um, it's a wonderful summer series. June is dedicated, I'll show you. June is dedicated to uh, praying, preparing, and planting. Uh, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful, really exciting series uh, to understand our um, how the laws of cause and effect work, how our thoughts are powerful, how um, we are in, we have way, way, way more control over our lives than we think we do. Um, Ernest Holmes, I'm paraphrasing him now, but he said something, something to the effect of that has taken humanity hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to recognize that we are in charge of our own destiny. So, I say yes, that's true. Yeah, I think it's true. So anyway, so we're we have a uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit. We have a little music from Amy and Jesse. We have one song, maybe two. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we were kind of um, in the middle of that. Harold, where have you been? We're in the middle of working that out. But for now, let me bring uh, let me pray us in, and then I'll bring Amy and Jesse in for our a song. And then we'll kind of dive into our message. How does that sound? Hi, Sandra. I know who doesn't love a garden. I know. I know. I'll share with you my own experience uh, of my garden, my literal garden, which is always a great metaphor for our spiritual garden, for life itself. It's like the butterfly. You know, the butterfly is a great analogy for our becoming awakened spiritual a great analogy for how we consciously architect a life of our own design. So, but for now, let's pray for a minute, right? So let's just uh, take a moment and turn within. A moment to simply just pause and remember that, uh, remember, we start at the beginning, which is to remember the power, the presence, the life of God. This uh, God, uh, we, it's a word we use to describe um, universal love, unconditional love, universal wisdom, unlimited intelligence, this quantum field of potentiality, this quantum field of unlimited possibilities, this quantum field that we, that connects us one to another. You know, we are the only begotten of this field 
that is uh, like, it's the ethers. It's the air that we breathe. It's like water to the fish. We walk around going, where's God? Where's God? It's like God is right here, right here, closer to us than our breath. And so it is from that place that I bless our evening tonight, calling it good and perfect and whole, knowing that it is everywhere present and knowing that as we come together by choice, we chose to sit down and tune in tonight, that you've already invited the miracle. The miracle is invited. We simply sit still for a half an hour or so as it reveals itself, as it unfolds itself. And so we're grateful. We're grateful. We just let this time be together. We bless it. And so it is. Amen. So uh, let's invite, uh, let's listen to Amy Jesse's first song for us. Maybe our only song tonight. I'm not sure. But here, uh, here they are. God evening to you, Denise. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wisdom Wednesdays. We're so happy you're here. All right. All right. Let's silence and know that we are. Thank you, Amy and Jesse. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Blessings and thank you so much. <sighs> we are light. You are light. I am light. Life is light. Mm -hmm. Hi, Patrick. Mm. All right. So, um, so let's talk about this thing. Uh, let's talk about this idea of life as a garden. You know, the... Um, I thought it would be useful to look at the third principle of unity. The third principle of unity is that human beings create their experiences by the activity of their thinking. Everything in the manifest realm has its beginning in thought. So it's useful to really begin to look at our life like a garden. And in, in truth, right now, your garden is the one you've got. And your garden, whatever is in the garden, whether it's beautiful or whether it's overgrowing or whether it's zen or whether it's full of weeds or whether it doesn't really matter what that garden is, that if it's there, it's yours. If it's there, it's yours. So, you know, uh, I actually do have an analogy in my own life this week in that I uh, have this house in North Fort Myers and I bought it about a year ago and it is was full and full and full of stuff. I mean, full of full of stuff that I didn't really like and I don't really like gardening too much. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, there was my garden and I have a gardener who came and he said, well, what do you want to do with this? And I said, well, 
I don't know. I said, he goes, you want me to weed it out? I said, okay. And he goes, well, what do you really want to do with it? I said, well, I'd really like it all to be gone so I can plant flowers. So he said, okay, well, let's do that. I said, oh, okay. So it took him four hours. He charged me $50 plus some materials to totally take everything that was there out and put in these beautiful Florida bushes with orange flowers on it. And now I have the garden I wanted. And I think that what we're going to, what we're exploring for the next few months is this idea that, that the garden that you have is there by, by uh, right of consciousness, by right of consciousness. And uh, this isn't, by the way, um, anything to feel bad about or think about too much. Uh, it's more useful to just accept it, more useful to just say, I totally get that how I've been, who I've been, uh, how I think, how I act, what I allow in has led to the conditions, people, places, and circumstances in my life, that I have a role in the architecting of my life. Now, it's easy. It's easy to look at a garden and to understand how the law of cause and effect works. And I'll tell you, when you take a carrot seed, when you take a carrot seed and you put that carrot seed into fertile soil and whatever it's supposed to happen happens, ultimately, what do you get? You get a carrot. So the, the seed and the carrot are directly related to each other, right? Right, we get that. So when you put the carrot seed into the soil, never, ever, ever will you get a tomato. Or never will you ever get uh, an, elk, an oak tree. You will only get a carrot. So when we think about how the quantum field works and how this we map this to our own experience, is if you um, let's uh, let's take an easy example. If you if you have this thought or this idea that your life is hard. And especially, and by the way, keep in mind that we, until we wake up, we're very suspicious people. We're suspicious. Well, maybe that too. Uh, we're very uh, superstitious people. And we're very much at, um, metaphysically speaking, assigning secondary causation to our lives. Like the reason I think life is hard is because all the conditions in my life have proven that to be true. My life is hard. My life has always been hard. My parents' life was hard, right? They believed life was hard. Uh, that that may or all may or may not be true, but it's not the truth. It's not the spiritual truth. The truth is your life is going to be whatever you say it is. Your life is going to be a reflection of what you hold and thought most of the time. It's just how it is. So if we, it's the it's, it's just how it is. Like the carrot in the, producing a carrot seed is. If you if we can grasp that, then the whole metaphysical conundrum become simple because then you realize that your thoughts, I know this is deep, your your thoughts, conscious or unconscious, are exactly the same as the carrot seed, that they get planted into the fertile soil of that which creates everything. And whatever it is, it gets created. The universe does not say, oh, I really like Denise. I'm going to create for her, even though she's really fearful about life, I'm going to create for her a life with no fear. I'm going to create a life where she experiences safety, even though she doesn't. But it just doesn't work that way. That the circumstances, the conditions will reflect back to you it, what you predominantly think about consciously or what's planted in your subconscious. And so if we want to change the outer, we have to change the inner. You know, none of this is new. Really, we talk about this week after week after week after week. But what we want to do this summer is to discover how to be a conscious seed planter in our own life. And you will have to, you'll have to experiment because my thoughts can't plant seeds for you. As much as I want everyone in the world to be happy, healthy, peaceful, wise, well-fed, it's not, my thought can't do that for you. The only gardener in your garden is you. 
You are the only one. So we have to do a couple things, right? And we, I tend to do this. I tend to want to pack the whole thing into tonight. But for now, maybe for this week, we can toy with this idea. This idea that our life is like a garden and that we are going to tend to our spiritual garden. We're going to look at what's there. We're going to decide what needs to go. We're going to decide what needs to be planted. We're going to do what we need to nourish and nurture that. And one of the first steps might be one, one first step. Number one, I think is to truly just wrap your brain around this metaphysical idea. You know, this universe is not, um, things didn't just come to be because I don't know, like for no reason, for no, there is a cause in back of everything. There is, this is not a chaotic universe. I know it, some people like to say we live in a world of chaos, but we do not. Just, and it's no leap of faith for me. You just look at, I mean, just look at the planting process. You plant a carrot seed, and given that the seed was viable to begin with, and given that the soil is nut has nutrients in it, and given that the water and the sun, that the environment is proper. And given that you have patience and don't dig up the seed, wondering where the hell it is, that ultimately something will come out of the earth that represents what got put in. Do you know how much order is in there? How much harmony is in there? How much science is in there? How much nature is in there? And, and you and I, we didn't create the process, whatever we call God, whatever we call the source energy, whatever we call the quantum field knows how to grow a carrot. We just know how to take advantage of the process. Right? That's right. That is absolutely right. So anyway, so that's what we're focusing on this month. Now, I have to, uh, uh, I have to do something to get Amy and Jesse back for our song. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put something, I'm going to put a song on for you called from Karen Drucker. I just want you to listen to it for a minute while I put the image back up and then I will, I promise you, I will be right back with our song with Amy and Jesse for the second song. All right. So hold on just a second. Let me give you, let me give you this. And let me give you the song and I will be right back. In the stillness of this moment there is peace. stillness of this moment there is peace there is peace and I rest and trust and breathe and know that in the stillness of this moment there is peace All right. Are you still with me? You are. I'm so proud of you. That was so good. I thought, oh no, don't go away. Don't go away. <laughs> I like you guys so much. Hey, we have a big group here tonight. There are 20 of us on right now. You know, a lot of people, uh, I love the Wisdom Wednesdays and I love, love, love that Amy and Jesse have been participating with us. You know, it's just like so uh, incredibly special. And in fact, they're actually doing, um, we're having a meeting on campus next week, uh, the committee coming together to look at creating 
Unity Naples into a retreat center, a world, a global destination retreat center. That meeting's next week and I have to be at it. So it's at Wednesday at 6.30. So Amy and Jess, you're going to be doing all of Wednesday next week. Isn't that exciting? But for now, let me go get them and uh, we will have their second song. And if you have any questions about tonight, about your life as a garden, about the power of thought, about, uh, you know, we're going to talk about this for a few weeks about really how to, how to manage the environment. Uh, when we come back from the song, we'll talk about the first part, which is to pray, right? It's prayer, prayer, pray, pr prepare, plant. Uh, so we want to, um, we want to uh, talk about that part a little bit. But for now, let us uh, get Amy and Jesse back here. Hi. Uh, this is my um, floral, uh, tending our spiritual garden shirt, by the way. This is what I want my spirit to look like by the end of the summer. Uh, this is a song we haven't done in a while. Thought would be a good bridge from awakening into tending. Um, what I took away from Rev Denise's message this past Sunday is that there is still and always is work to do. Uh, we're not at the end of uh, an awakened world month and suddenly we're all 100% awakened, but we have the, we recognize the sleepwalking in our lives and to choose the good over that, to choose peace over that. We're looking forward to a great summer of tending our spiritual garden. It's all about beautiful work. Um, so enjoy the song. Like heaven on earth. Hmm. All right. So here's uh, some uh, parting words of wisdom. So remember this week, here's your homework. This week, your homework is to 
figure out the seeds you want to plant. So pray on it, meditate on it. Now you could plant a seed for a new car. You could plant a seed for a new job. You could plant a seed for money. You could do that. And, and you should do that. If you need money, a job or a car, you should absolutely. Those, those things, by the way, are so easy for God. So easy. But keep in mind that the carrot seed is the only conscious part that it happens. The rest is taken care of by some invisible force that knows how to do what we've asked it to do. So our job, your job and my job is the what, not the how. So uh, uh, to plant seeds of prosperity will require that you begin to shift your consciousness into prosperity consciousness, right? How that prosperity comes to you isn't yours to do. God knows how to do that. So you just need to open to shifting and changing and awakening and becoming different. So pray for what you really want in life. Like what's most important? Like, like what would you love your garden to look like? And I would have fun with it. I would journal with it. I would. It. And, um, and just remember, just remember, God cannot bring happiness to a person who's committed to unhappiness. God will not bring you something you are not. So remember the universe only and always says yes. Whatever you say, the universe says yes. I am, I am poor. Yes, you are. I am rich. Yes, you are. So we want to uh, become conscious seed planters. Like that, con that part of you that is conscious is the part of you that is God. You may not be all God, but the part of you that is consciousness itself is your part of universal mind. And we want to use that part to plant our seeds. Up until now, your subconscious unconscious has been planting seeds. And that's what's gotten manifested. So when you look at what's in your life, do not judge it. Do not assign blame to anyone. Do not shame yourself. Just get that it's your garden. And this is a summer of taking control of your garden and having it produce for you what you want produced. Yes, do you say yes to that? I say yes to that. I definitely say yes to that. I mean, it only cost me $50 to have the garden I want. All right, so I'm gonna pray us out, but I'm gonna uh, say to you, um, Please uh, support Wednesday nights, support so we can keep uh, Amy and Jesse coming. And if you use our text to give option, you can just use our text number, which is 239-230-4704, followed and then in the amount, you just put the amount you want to donate and the word wisdom. If you've never done it before, it'll give you a prompt or two, but then from now on, it's easy breezy. If you don't want to do that, you can simply go to our website and uh uh, unitynaples.org forward slash giving and there's a donate button right there. So we appreciate your support. You know, your support, our church is supported by us. There's no, uh, there's no uh, sugar daddy giving us money every week. So we're grateful in advance because we're here to have the world become a happier, brighter, more awakened place to end all the things, to take all the things out of our garden that we do not want. All right. So how about we pray together? I didn't see any questions. I saw no questions. Uh, hi, Jill Welch. I've been sending you love and light this week. I know you're moving through some things. So love to you. Love to all of you, whatever you're moving through in life. No. We're here to support each other because uh, life happens. Right. All right. So turn within with me, please. You know, we turn within to that sacred secret place inside of us that is our connection to each other, our connection to the divine. It is that place that within, within us that is unharmable and indestructible, that the spirit of you has never been gone, never been lost. No matter what you've experienced, no matter what you've been through, you in this moment are whole and perfect and complete. And the world is your oyster. I promise you that we are not at the effect of people, places, situations, or circumstances. Your past does not run your future. 
Our thoughts run our future. So we're here to change them. So as we turn within to that place, we just simply connect in to the divinity within us. We remember God first and foremost. And we remember that we are made in its image and likeness. We are made out of God's substance. We are made, all that it is, is, is within us. And I know this is true for me. And I know that it's true for you. And I know that's true for each person within the sound of my voice, that we are connected by a golden thread of goodness. And I also know that my that our words are words are seed thoughts. Our words are seeds. You know, in the beginning was the word, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be let this earth be peopled, and the earth was peopled. And in exactly the same way, our words are a law unto themselves. And I know that the word I speak, especially when I know it with conviction, uh, moves out from me into the fertile soil of this universe. And it creates. And so on, I'm speaking a word on our behalf, all of us in this moment, to claim and proclaim that we are going to become fabulous gardeners, creative gardeners, conscious gardeners, that we're going to plant seeds of peace, we're going to plant seeds of love, we're going to plant seeds of prosperity, we're going to plant seeds of health, we're going to plant seeds of comfort, soul comfort. And so I just simply know that, um, that, as we do this, molecules are moved. Synchronicities take place. So we say yes. We say yes to letting life be grand, glorious, um, successful, heartwarming, meaningful, purposeful. Is it too much to ask? No. We simply make it welcome. And so I'm grateful for tonight. I'm grateful to stop in the middle of this week and, and, and get together to remember who we are, to whom we belong, and to what's possible for us. And so I release my word like seeds into the soil, and we just leave this time expecting and accepting the fulfillment of the prayer spoken. Join me, please, accepting every word I've said as if you've said it and you believe every word of it by saying, and so it is. Amen. Okay. Oh, man. Thank you. Such a glorious, glorious night. Thank you, Amy and Jesse, for joining us again. Please come be with them next week. I will miss you next week, but I'll be week, uh, here with you the week following, and we'll see what mischief we can get into. So in the meantime, you just have a glorious evening. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Peace and blessings.